everybody prophetic here with a quick video on how i access remote machines in a almost bulletproof way two things you need tail scale and x11 vnc so for tail scale you can go to tailscale.com install it but before you install it, you may want to know what it is. Tail scale connects your devices in various environments. And it's a VPN essentially. So it's a mesh VPN network based on WireGuard. So not only is it easy to use, it's also a highly secure. So uh, they have great prices. They're very open source, uh, uh, FOSS friendly. So three users, but you don't need three users, just use yourself. Um, up to 100 devices, which is, you know, epic. They just increased it from 25 to 100. And they have also some pretty cool DNS stuff that's pretty dope. And it's easy to sign up with SSO with a single sign-on with Google. So uh, super easy to onboard. So I won't go into the reasons why I didn't do my own WireGuard or my own little separate server or anything like that, um, because that's for another thing. That's really a, a, a issue I take up with regarding like the pain points of self-hosting and people claim self-hosting is so easy and, and except when it comes to networking and securing your environment. So yes, I could, I can stand a, you know, self-hosted environment and do all kinds of stuff, you know, easily. But what they don't talk about is how to do it securely and harden it. So that's why I tend to uh, use TailScale as a somewhat workaround. Uh, of course, you know when it comes to security and privacy, it's not a silver bullet. You gotta you know not be dumb uh, when you're clicking on things. Um, and VPN doesn't like mask your identity. It's just a VPN. It makes you know what you connect to and um, you know uh, encrypted. So uh, people who are trying to intercept can't intercept um, unless, you know, for certain circumstances. But I digress. Essentially, short story, uh, long story short, tail scale is awesome. It's super easy. It's just as powerful as it is easy to set up. Usually the more powerful something is, the harder it is to set up. So this is uh, pretty much hits it out the park on both ends. So you sign up. Here are the instructions. They have a curl based installer with one command. If you don't like curl because, you know, security, um, you can have manual installs with no, no problem. Um, so there is multiple ways to do this. So again, um, it's uh, well regarded in the community and well trusted. So I have no problem using curl. Um, so once you install it, you can do a command called uh, sudo tail scale status and it'll do it like a terminal printout of what's connected what's on what's offline and it gives you the readout a printout of those IP addresses um, so basically you take tail scale you install it on the remote device that you're trying to access and once you grab that IP address because based on this printout you can um, be able to you should be able to see it here on that list whatever you name it now this is pretty much, you can do this before or after you install X11 VNC. X11 VNC is pretty much easy to install. You just, you know, sudo app to get X11 VNC. Um, you can run it locally with the terminal. Just say X11 VNC, and then it'll walk you through, like, making a password. Um, and you can kind of have your X11 VNC locally set up. Um, the problem is with X11 VNC is that you got to have it like persistent and keep it always on. And the ch not that it's a challenge, it's an extra step. Um, you would have to create a service file, a systemd service file, to make that be always on, essentially. Now, that's we can easily do that. Um, I can maybe provide a systemd service file that I use. Um, for an Ubuntu 1804 instance, if you like. But the challenge it becomes is what if you log out or what if you connect and then disconnect uh, from a session? You have to make sure that 
once you close out that session that you're remotely accessing, the X11 service relaunches and then you can re-access it again. So it's not, it's, it's kind of like X11 VNC is kind of like, uh, it will only do what exactly what you say it, make it do. It won't make any assumptions. And it's a kind of like a the blood sword, blessing and curse. Um, personally, if I was, you know, product lead on X11 VNC, I would make certain assumptions that it's always on, always accessible. And even you can hit the login screen, but um, it's not built that way. So you have to kind of do all kinds of things on the systemd file um, to make it do those things when you log in. And that's where the dilemma comes in. Who wants to mess with config files, right? So basically, um, if you install, um, if you have a SSG, open SSH on your server, um, on your machine, which most systems do, and if you don't, it's just a matter of this. Open uh, following, following these instructions, enabling it so it's always on. And now you can access your remote machine um, through your terminal using the Tailscale IP. So basically what I do is I, I grab the IP of the machine I'm trying to target out of this list. I go sudo, or not sudo, um, I do SSH, the username, at the IP. So if your username was Bob on the remote machine, you put Bob at 100 dot, whatever it is, punch in the password. If it's your first time, you have to like uh, affirm the credentials and press yes, and then press put in the password. Now you're SSH into your machine. Now you can do another command. The other command is, um, I should, Actually, sudo is a, I should put this on, I'm not super flashy when it comes to these videos, but essentially, uh, sudo notepad. And is ssh, um, at 100, that one, that blah, 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 blah. Once you're in, you, or into your SSH into your machine, uh, the next command you'll put in is x11 VNC, create, enter. And then basically you kind of spawned a remote instance. Once that is on, you'll see, you'll have like some tech, like there's an active pro program running in your terminal. Do that you'll be able to punch in go to remina which is a you know remote desktop client you can, of all kinds vnc rdp ssh basically you create a new connection vnc you know um for our church we have it here we name it so they can listen to the, the sermon while they're watching the kiddos. And then punch in the server IP that's provided by Tailscale, user password, presenter. And then sometimes, depending on like, I have a system, for, uh, so I have a system D service file. So 5900 is taken. You might have to add 5901 um, or 5900, depending on your setup, but usually pun punching that after the IP colon, and then these four numbers, 5900 or 5901. Actually, this will read out on the terminal once you punch in um, X11 create, it'll actually literally tell you which port, if it's 5900 or 5901. Punch that in, and then you'll be connected. So why is this like, you know, better than other solutions, right? 
Um, why not any desk or team viewer? Well, team viewer cancels things if you're not a business or a user, or if they get a sniff that you're using it on Linux, they assume you're using it for business. So I've had my team viewer account shut down um, because I'm using it for a nonprofit. There's this kind of like middle ground for nonprofits. They're not businesses fully, but they're not also like individual use. And so like you're kind of like stuck in this weird ground, like can you use it? Can you not use it? Uh, so any desk um, free version um, is is used temporarily, but I'm don't, at any moment any desk might say, "Hey, this is we detect that you're not using it for personal use," and it might shut us down. So we need a reliable way to access machines. Um, and then also the fact that you know I'm dealing with volunteers, and when they're troubleshooting something. I like to see exactly what they see. So if they say, hey, we can't hear the sermon stream or, hey, the songs for the kids are not working. Um, what is going on? I can literally go in and, and, and show them how to do something remotely or they can show me what they try to do. Because sometimes, you know, in support, what they say they tried to do versus what they actually did and them showing you can be a world of a difference. So that's where this comes in handy now because x11 vnc is a product that's like it's a little older it's kind of getting not getting as much love these days it might be on its way out but um you know that doesn't say that it's still not usable and, and solid especially when you pair it with tail scale um you'll notice that <clears throat> when when you get logged in your session you have to remain in the session um, this way, um, you avoid having to deal with like getting cut out. Now, there is a way to access the login screen through X11 VNC, um, but I've tried it and it's hit or miss, you know, with different distros and different, you know, point releases, right? Um, so uh, to avoid that, maybe another video when I make it bulletproof or when I figure that out, I'll do, an, I'll do a video on that. But in the meantime, your remote machine has to always be on, has to always be logged in. And um, when you're this way, you don't have to, it's, it's always accessible. Otherwise, you might have a hard time restarting the x VNC. VNC. Um, so again, it's not impossible to have it log out. Um, like I said, I have it on our AV machine where we do the streaming, the source streaming. Um, but for some reason, when I do other machines, that system D file, um, I may, I might have it misconfigured or it's not driving well with the different, the distribution. So this is kind of like in between ground of making it secure, always accessible. And I'm seeing the actual screen that the volunteer sees and it's stable. This being, this thing will always populate. Don't want to get these weird one-offs where it won't work. So, um, anyways, if you're looking for a hacky way to get into it, cool. Um, if you want to learn about or get involved with a project that I'm doing where I am, um, I am, uh, accessing, um, I'm actually help me and two other people are actually, um, working on a way to make this a bulletproof script for any environment, whether it's LXUT or Ubuntu or Mate or Plasma, uh, they slightly have different variations um, for their login manager. So I'm going to have to create something special for each systemd service file and um, where the person I'm working with will have to do that. And uh, if you want to be part of that project, let me know. And uh, yeah, I just feel like this is something that should be easy for folks. You know, um, Linux is mastered and crushed it in so many areas it's kind of you know hurts my heart hurts my soul a little bit that it's kind of uh lacking in remote access in an easy way and um again this is if you want a session that the user sees as if you're right in front of the laptop if you want headless you know sir you know that kind of stuff that's not the scope of what i'm trying to do i know there's solutions that they're out there i know xrdp is a thing i know uh, variations of VNC are a thing. I'm looking for a very unique scenario where I'm actually accessing the uh, screen that the user sees. Well, my kid's yelling at me. I gotta go. Peace.
Yes, Baba. Are you down there? Yes, I'm down here. What's up? Down 